we've worked to bring the stories of those who lost their lives on May 14th to you at home, as well as the survivors who are ever forever impacted by what they witnessed here on that day. 7 News reporter Jocelyn Person caught up with four of those survivors, finding out how they are coping now, two years later. Because there are still some people who haven't come back into the store as of yet. So, you know, once you have a purpose, it helps you have a plan. And then you, you just keep moving forward. Patrick Patterson is a 514 survivor. He still shows up to work at the Tops on Jefferson. In the morning, there's not much for me. The same store where he was almost killed by one of the bullets from the mass shooter. I didn't realize upon seeing the expressions on the faces of the individuals running toward me that it was real. So uh, we came into the back room, the grocery back room, and, and I went halfway in and told, told them that the door was right there and all they had to do was unlatch the hook and they could go out. Despite that terror, he tells me the tragedy didn't stop him from going back to the store he calls home. And with airy hug and smile, Patrick hopes by comforting other survivors like Kurt Baker and Fragrance Harris Stanfield. So a lot of my help came from scriptural, biblical points of view. Um, we dispelled the racism because there's only one race. When you focus on that, you and evil comes in all different shades, sizes. Uh, and so I was able to help people fight through that. All you heard was bing, 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 bing. The bullets were ricocheting off the... Um, the walls. Kurt Baker worked at the Jefferson Tops. He, along with Patrick, helped shelter people from the bullets. Kurt now works at the Tops on Elmwood in North Buffalo. Me personally, you know, I kind of would like to, uh, you know, uh, move past. It was a difficult situation. Um, you know, I, but I would like to move past. But one of the things I will say that I really appreciate about the situation is that it really brought uh, our community together. I got my feelings back since the shooting. I lost my um, feelings during the shooting. Grady Lewis saw the shooting from the parking lot. In fact, a day before the shooting, Grady spoke with the killer, Peyton Gendron, right here outside the store. But on 514, Grady had no clue. The person he spoke with had a motive. I was going to sit down and right there in the parking lot, but I decided to go across the street. And as I started to drink, I heard shooting. And I saw a guy shooting people. And then he came out and they arrested him. And throughout the day, you know, I'm starting hearing little things that he's from two hours away. Um, um, someone showed me half the video of him getting out of the car and I was like, this car better not be blue and it was blue. Uh, Cause these are some of the things he told me that he lived two hours away. I saw that he had a blue car cause I watched him get in his car and watched him leave. Grady tells me he goes to counseling almost every day and journals to get by. But I just started to write and the writing actually helped me. Um, for me, it actually helps cause now I live, have a little bit more insight of who he is. Um, Besides that, I don't have no, no ties to him or, or feel bad that I talked to him. Actually, I feel good that I talked to him. Other survivors like Fragrance Harris still have a hard time coping. Something died, you know, in my life. Like it may not have been the breath that I'm breathing, but something did. I was in the front of the freaking store when this started. So no, I don't need a reminder. I don't need a remembrance. I don't need that. And I'm not even acknowledged most of the time. Um, we have memorials going up. <laughs> don't have anything to do with me. Like I don't need to be memorialized because I'm alive, but do something. Do something. Don't just act like it just didn't happen to me. Sometimes it takes some sort of calamity or thing like this, a, a flood or an earthquake for us to, for our humanity to come out and want to help others. Survivors leaning on each other, taking one day at a time and living every day as a gift.
Jocelyn Person, 7 News Buffalo.